in verse 17 in chapter 5, begin reading, Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, Till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law, till all be fulfilled. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments shall teach men so, and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I say unto you, that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. Ye have heard that it was said by them of old time, Thou shalt not kill, and whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment. But I say unto you, that whosoever is angry with his brother without cause shall be in danger of the judgment. And whosoever shall say to his brother, Raka, shall be in danger of the council. But whosoever shall say, Thou fool, shall be in danger of hell fire. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord God, for this opportunity to be here. And Lord, we just love you today. And we give you honor and praise and glory for who you are. Father God, I just pray that you will anoint me to preach and that you will anoint the ears to hear. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Hell, is it real? I'm going to tell you this morning that most ministers don't even preach about it anymore. And a lot of them don't even believe it anymore. Some don't even believe it and teach it. They don't think that there is a literal hell. Yet Jesus came preaching warning of hell. As we read in here, thou Thou fool, whosoever shall say thou fool shall be in danger of hell fire. That is a word, it's a descriptive term, hell fire. It's popular not to preach hell fire. And in fact, when you preach hell fire and damnation, you're not a very popular preacher. But guess what? We have to preach the entire counsel of God. That means we preach the word. Amen? And whether you believe it or not, it's not going to change a thing. You can say all day long that hell does not exist, but the pages of this Word of God are filled with warnings of it. And I believe from the beginning of it, for God created all the way to the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. I believe it in its entirety. Either you believe it all or you believe it none. It is not a I can take this and leave this out. It is not I can follow this and I've decided this doesn't suit me today so I'm not going to follow this. That is not the way that the Word of God is. That is not how God is. He is the same and He never changes. You believe it all or you believe it none. And Jesus preach more about hell than he did about heaven because hell is a biblical doctrine. You can't change it. As it's written in Matthew 25 and 41, you don't have to turn there, but it's the place that's prepared for the devil and his angels and all of those who die without Christ will be cast there with them into the lake of fire. Amen? Y'all will turn with me. And y'all know I like to move. <laughs> so uh, we, we got a little bit because I have a new Bible. It's kind of hard for me to... My one's really worn and uh, it's easy to get there. But these pages ain't quite so heavy. If you will go to Revelation chapter 21, I want to read one short little bitty verse. Revelation 21. And verse 8. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable, abominable, and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. You can say all day long that there is no hell. But one day, if the Lord doesn't come back soon, if He tarries, you are going to die. Your heart will breathe. Will your heart will beat its last beat? 
Your lungs will breathe their last breath. And you will be carried to one place or the other. Where is your soul going to go? Are you sure of your salvation this morning? You've prepared everything. You've prepared your home, your marriage, your job. You've done your 401k. You've prepared for your future retirement. And you, some of you have even made your funeral plans. They paid for your plot. But have you made plans to know where you are headed when you leave this world to eternity? It doesn't matter if hell is no longer preached by preachers. It does not matter if hell is no longer taught in the seminaries. It doesn't matter if they rewrite the Bible and take hell completely out of it. It is still real. It does not change the fact that there is a literal hell and if you die without Christ, that you are going to live there for eternity. Hell is a place of forever. And some say hell does not exist because they say it's, in, it's not compatible with the love of Christ. How can God send someone to hell to burn in torment? They want to talk about His love. And I love to talk about His love. But greater love has no man that He that lays His life down for His friends. That's the love of God sending His Son. Amen? They want to talk about His love and His mercy. But yet they leave out the judgment. Everyone wants the feeling good tickle my ear message on Sunday morning. Everybody wants to come to church and feel good these days. Everyone wants the no consequence. That's the best thing a young parent can do is teach their child that there is a consequence when they do something wrong. But everybody wants the life of no consequence. But I'm here to tell you today that Jesus was the greatest preacher in hell and all this living word. He said, Woe unto you teachers of the law and of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites, he called them. You travel over land and sea to win a single convert. And when you succeeded, you make them twice as much a child of hell as you are. Jesus called them a generation of vipers. And he asked them, how can you escape the damnation of hell? Jesus preached more about hell than he preached about heaven. Matthew 5 and, and verse 29, he even said that if your right eye causes you to sin, to pluck it out and throw it away. And I'm paraphrasing, but it's better for you to lose one of your members than in your whole body get thrown into hell. And this morning, this afternoon, I want to explain to you from the Word of God what hell is. First of all, the, the Bible says that hell is going to be a kingdom of total darkness. And that's literally and spiritually. The Holy Spirit ain't going to be in hell, y'all. There's not going to be that wooing and that comfort that the Holy Spirit brings. Satan's kingdom is full of darkness. In God's kingdom, there's not a need for light because the Lamb is the light. Amen? Jesus Christ is the light. But in hell, it's going to be eternal darkness, not one speck of light. It will be so tormenting and so suffocating that those cast there will gnaw their tongues in pain. And Jude warned to whom is reserved the blackness the blackness of darkness forever. A darkness, and we cannot define it by human reasoning. Peter said that a mist of darkness is reserved forever. If you'll recall Egypt, the darkness, it could be felt. Just as a thick darkness, they didn't even move. It was dark. They couldn't even see the hand right in front of their face. 
That was a darkness that was felt, and that's the darkness that in hell is going to be about. Fire? <laughs> Not the fire that God has created. In hell, there's no light to that fire. Jesus warned the kingdom, the children of the kingdom, to be cast into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And it's a spiritual darkness being cast further and further and further from God. The reality sets in that there's no hope. First, Second Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 9 talks about who will be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of His power. You are separated from the presence of the Lord. Turn with me, if you will, to Luke, the 16th chapter. Luke, chapter 16. And we're going to read this morning a story. And I don't believe this is a parable because Jesus didn't mention names in his parables. So this is a literal story. And this is a story in chapter 16, beginning in 19, of the rich man and Lazarus. Now there was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus which was laid at his gate full of sores and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried, and in hell he lifted up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me! And said, Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue. For I am tormented in this flame. Can you imagine? But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime received thy good things, and my cause Lazarus evil things, but now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. And beside all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither they can pass to us that would come from thence. Lazarus was, pro Lazarus was probably buried in the potter's field. It was a place that they buried people, the poor that had no family, no way to take care of them. And they probably buried him there. And he lived in poverty his whole life with sword begging from the table. But he had his faith in God. And that rich man didn't need God. Or he thought he didn't need God. So the latter end of Lazarus was eternal, eternal salvation in the arms of a precious Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And the latter end of the rich man was hell. Hell has patience. It doesn't matter if you live to be 90, 9, 100, 120 years old. It doesn't matter. Because Isaiah 5 and 14 says, Therefore hell hath enlarged herself and opened her mouth without measure. And their glory and their multitude and their pomp, he that rejoices shall descend into it. In hell, he lifted up his eyes. And he saw. You know, in Genesis, the second chapter, we know that God created man and made him a living soul. You are a soul. And you have a spirit. And you live in a clay body, this temple, this earthen temple that one day the Lord tarries 
and we're here that we're going to breathe our last breath. Our heart will beat its last heartbeat. And these earth and clay bodies will return to the dust. But the spirit and the soul, which cannot be separated, will live on forever. Every man, every woman, every child, including those children that were killed in the womb, because life begins at conception, He formed us in the womb. Every one of them will be in one of two places. Alive forever, forever and forever. And when we die, we sleep. But soon, soon, Daniel 2, 12 and 2, and many of those who slept in the dust of the earth shall awake some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Matthew 25 and 46 says, And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. Our lives are just a vapor. They're fleeting. We're here one day and gone tomorrow. And how do I know this? Because this is what the Word of God says, and I believe it. And the only thing that gives any comfort to anybody on this world, on this entire planet, not just the United States, is the fact that the Holy Spirit is still here working and wooing and comforting, and the saints are here praying. Amen? But you know, this is the most brainwashed generation I think that I have ever seen in my entire life. There is very little sensitivity to the things of God anymore. In fact, people have become desensitized. I know y'all know that word. I've talked about it a lot. It used to be that <laughs> Roger and I were talking at Thanksgiving dinner yesterday. We had it a week, a week or whatever, early, a week I guess. And uh, he was saying, you know, you couldn't even see a kiss on TV. But now, you see pretty much full-fledged out pornography on syndicated TV. It's just filthy. And if you're a Christian and you're watching that garbage, you need to get on your knees and you need to repent and turn away. Because I'm telling you what, we are living too close for you to be playing games with God. Amen? Amen. No conviction anymore. There isn't any conviction. There's drive-by shootings everywhere. You got mothers killing their babies. You got abortions that are crazy. There's been more abortions given under this administration than there has ever been. And people say, well, that's just the world we live in. Well, I'm going to tell you something right now, friend. God's about tired of it, and He's about to show up on the scene. Amen? People say, whatever feels good, just do it. And they make their own laws of good and evil. But Isaiah says, woe to them that call evil good and good evil. Woe to them. You know, hell is full of murderers. Go with me to Revelation 21. Revelation chapter 21. And I'm going to show you who's going to be in hell. I'm just getting started. Revelation 21 and verse 8. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burned with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Nobody fears God anymore. Jesus said in Matthew, don't fear those that can kill the body but can't kill the soul, but rather fear Him that can destroy both the soul and the body in hell. Now tell me Jesus didn't preach about hell. He preached about hell. Jesus was a hell fire and damnation preacher. Amen? Hell is full of rich people. It's full of poor people. It's full of kings. It's full of queens. It's full of young people. It's full of old people. It's full of white people. It's full of black people. It's full of yellow people. It's full of purple people. Is there purple people? Wow. <laughs> it's full of Baptists. It's full of Methodists. It's full of Catholics. It's full 
school of Pentecostals, the word says, Revelations 20 and 15, and if anyone's name was not found written in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. That took you so to go there. Is your name written? Jesus said in Matthew chapter 7, enter at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And many be there that go in. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way that leadeth unto life, and few be there that find it. The great flood. How many were saved? Eight. Noah, his family. In Sodom and Gomorrah, how many were saved? Lot was two daughters. And I believe that the majority of the pew-warming, so-called, self-professed Christians are going to go to hell. Many who are so blinded that they're not living for God. Oh, when you talk to them, they say, oh, but I've been baptized. I've heard that before. Believe you me. I go to church on Sunday. I get my tithe. But they're not living for God. There's been no true heart change conversion because when Jesus comes in, the bad goes out. Now, not all at once. It is a work of sanctification and none of us are perfect. We won't be until we reach our heavenly homes. Amen. But there will be some in shock when they wake up in hell because the sin of neglect that they neglected, they didn't take time. They were too busy with their life to take time out for Jesus Christ. How about this? How shall we escape damnation if we neglect so great a salvation? Wow. Isaiah said, you didn't lay it to your heart. You heard it and you dismissed it. Some of you, when the sermon is over and you stop watching it, you're going to forget everything that I have spoken. And you're going to blame it on a bad memory. Oh, I have a terrible memory. I can't remember what was preached in church today. You have heard it. And you have dismissed it. You know, I listened to a testimony of an atheist who, former atheist, <laughs> and as he described what he, he saw in hell, see, what had happened was he was on a construction site and someone had brought some water in and it was contaminated. And he drank it and he got sick and, and he got sent to the hospital and I guess he died. They were trying to bring him back. But he was telling the story of what he saw. But he was a devout atheist, did not believe in God, thought faith was a crutch. And he said that the, the thing that, of course, it, it, he told about how he went to heaven. Y'all can Google it and probably find it. But told how he went to heaven and Jesus had some keys and opened this door. And anyway... But he said he heard screams. And he said the most, one of the most vivid sounds he heard was like slurping sounds. And then when he, when he, when he, he fell and when he got up off the floor, he said people were coming to him, people that he knew, some people that were still alive. And then he looked at him and said, hey, this, he was thinking to himself, this isn't right. And then... When they came close, they began to change into the most horrid creatures that he had ever seen. He said their eyes had a yellow glint like a reptilian type eye. And he said that people were in cubes. And that as he looked in, that they were reliving their lives over and over and over. And, and as I listened to that, I thought of the 
the worm that never dies. The worm that never dies. In hell, you have an eternal body, just like we do in heaven. And it cannot be consumed. It has a worm that will never die. And one preacher that I listened to explained it like this. He said, imagine one day that you wake up in hell. You know, hell is a place of weeping and gnashing of teeth and torment. You know, the, di- the devil was cast in the lake of fire and brimstone, and he shall also be tormented day and night. So he ain't down there doing the tormenting, because he's being tormented himself. But where the worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. He said, he explained it like this. There was a man who his wife went to church and he had a little girl and he would go and sit in the pew and I'm probably getting this wrong but I'm going to give you the gist of it. Um, he died and then he, he woke up in hell and, and all of this stuff was happening to him. The screams, the, the heat, the worms, the scratching, all the horrible wailing and gnashing of teeth. And then He woke up and he was sitting in his living room watching a Billy Graham on the TV. His little girl over there playing with whatever she's playing with. And he looks up and he says, Honey, I had the most horrible dream. Bring me some coffee. Come here, let me tell you about it. And before he can profess Jesus, he's back in hell. And it's over and over and over how he lives this over and over and over instant replay every message that you have ever heard every radio sermon every YouTube sermon every sermon that you've listened to in person every song that you've ever heard every song that you've ever sung ouch that had to do with Jesus Christ And the gospel of Jesus Christ will replay over and over and over. That's the worm that never dies. That's the memory. You see, because there's memory in hell. You're going to be presented with every person that came to you with the gospel of Jesus Christ that shared it. Saints, I beg you, share the gospel while we have the open window. It's imperative. It is closing. I said in tears because I know that I know that I know there are not very many people that are ready. Y'all remember that wide and narrow. There is a memory in hell and you'll remember everything the faces. You're going to be in utter torment and the world will turn over and over and over with no relief at all. All throughout eternity. And if you could just in your mind think what eternity is, I don't think we can. It's never dying. Never dying. Eternal torment. No a thousand years and you get a break. but eternal, lasting damnation. The worm never dies. It never dies. But in heaven, the Lord's going to wipe out all the memory of those on this earth that did not know Him, that went to hell, because there's not going to be suffering. You're not going to be in heaven crying over your unsaved loved ones. But I can tell you one thing. Those of you that are listening to me today, if you do not heed the call of Jesus Christ this hour, you and and turn and go away and be killed on your way home or die in your sleep, you will hear my words for eternity. You will hear the begging and the pleading 
to come to Jesus Christ for eternity. And I'm not trying to scare you. But Peter said that knowing the terror of the Lord, we persuade them. Be persuaded this day. Amen. So how do how do I not go to heaven, you ask me? How can I keep from going there? Give me a glimmer of hope because let me tell you the only glimmer of hope is this side of eternity. When you're on close for the last time, there's not another chance. Acts 4 and 12, neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among them whereby we must be saved. One name given. One name only. And that name is Jesus. Hallelujah. He that hath the Son hath life. And he who hath not the Son of God hath not life. Well, this gospel of Jesus Christ is so simple and it's offered so simple to you today. Don't be the one that takes the broad path. Return to the old path, the narrow path, the path of Jesus. Embrace Jesus. Believe on Him. Repent and turn while you have time. You know, the Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Amen? For the wages of sin are death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Romans 6 and 23, if you declare with your mouth, Jesus is the Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead, you will be saved for every man that calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Amen. Romans 10, 13. And I pray this morning that I have given you just a glimpse of the eternity that you will have without Jesus Christ. That I don't leave you without hope. But the only hope is Jesus Christ. Who He was, what He did, and what He's about to do. Saints, we don't have much time. We don't have much time compared to eternity. Let us work while it is yet light. Let us bring more into the kingdom of God. You don't want them to go to hell. I don't want my worst enemy to go to hell. I don't want that blood on my hands. If you do not know Jesus Christ as your Savior, that's very, very simple. Confess it with your mouth and believe it in your heart, right? And I'm going to say a little prayer. And if tonight you would like to receive Jesus Christ as your Savior, say this prayer with me. And then believe it and go on and share it with others. Bow your heads with me. Heavenly Father, I admit that I'm a sinner. And I have not lived my life for you. I believe in you, Lord, and I believe that your word is true. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and that he sacrificed himself on the cross for my sins that I may live with you in eternity. I believe, Lord, that you raised him from the dead. I ask you, Father, to forgive me of every sin that I have committed in word or in deed or even in my heart. And I ask you, Jesus, to come into my heart and into my life and be the Savior of my soul. 
I give you my life this day and I ask you to lead me and guide me and direct me. From this day forward, I will live for you. Lord, help me to bring honor and glory to your name. And I thank you for it. And I pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. If you said that prayer with me this evening, I ask you to go tell someone. Tell someone the change that the Lord has made in you. And then go on to share with others the good news that Jesus Christ came to give us life and life eternal. Heavenly Father. Arkansas. We pray that you'll go and be blessed this week and tell someone you love them.